Hi everyone, this is Tara with Tara's Take. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be working on a collage again, but this time it's going to be in um, more of a green and neutral theme. And then also we're going to be doing a torn collage. So we're not going to have the straight edge structure today. Um, I decided to go ahead and skip doing, I was going to do a set of videos for each grouping and I decided to just go ahead and do the torn burgundy on my own and I'm going to go ahead and do the green today and then after that we'll move on to another project but I need to get these done so I can get them in my digital shop so I figured I'd turn on the camera and you guys could come along with me and hopefully join me and either um, have me uh, keeping you company while you craft on something else or join in with me and make this collage so like I said, today we're going to do the green. I am once again going to use the cardstock that I got from Walmart. Um, do I have my... I don't have my pad right here next to me, but it's the one that you can get in the crafting department at Walmart. And it's an 8.5 by 11. And then I've, I've went ahead and I've gone through some stuff and picked some pictures. Uh, printed out a few because I wanted maybe a couple of the pictures off of some of these. Aren't these beautiful prints? Um, so yeah, we're going to choose a few pics from these. And I've got my fussy cuts all set up here in a bowl so I don't have to search for them. They all have kind of a neutral or green uh, tone to them and they're, they're different tones. I think I'm going to go more toward the warm um, and not toward the bright as much, like this would be a cooler tone. I probably won't use this, more than likely. Um, I'll probably stick with more of a warmer tone for this one. But anyway, let's get started. So I also, you'll need, if you're going to join me, you'll need your scissors. Um, you will need, just in case, we are going to be doing a lot of tearing, but you never know, you always need your scissors. I am going to trim some of these pictures that I just showed you. So uh, I have my ink spreader here for the, the flatter surfaces. And then I have two daubers. I put new sponges on for the green. I have brought along archival ink in fern green, uh, distress oxide, rustic wilderness, Tim Holtz, uh, and also Tim Holtz vintage photo. And then I've got some stays on timber brown if I wanna do some darker brown. And I have a few little flowers here. I've fussy cut through the the last months, I don't know. And I just I put them all in a bowl and I figured they'd be easier for me to get to. I've brought some stamps of uh, multiple colors that we can I can choose from. And then I have things to my side, to my right and my left. So, you know, should be fun. So like yesterday, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose somebody to be a focal point. I was kind of thinking one of these ladies to go right here in the center of our collage. Um, I really like both of them a lot. I think because the of the greens, this one's going to have a lot of, uh, I've brought, like I said, I've brought a lot of flowers and stuff along. So it's probably going to have more natural stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and start tearing. And I always tear it away from me so that I don't get that white core like that here. And uh, I'm just going to go around this young lady and bring her down a little bit in size and also get that torn effect. Be real careful up here by her head. Tear this little piece off. So today is Saturday for me. Um, how is everybody's weekend going? I know that if you're listening to this on another day, it's past the weekend probably, but for right now it is Saturday. I am home and my husband is home. He works during the week. And he is uh, taking a nap right now, and I told him I'm going to go ahead and film while you rest. <laughs> so, I really like this green. It's got, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's bright, but at the same time, it's got that, that really earthy, almost mossy look. I enjoy working with 
green a lot. And it's funny because I really didn't think that I liked green all that much, to be honest with you guys. And I mean, I like it in nature to look at it outside. But as far as choosing green, and then this last spring, I ended up um, doing a journal, a spring journal, and I did it in greens, and I had so much fun. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And so ever since then, I've kind of been looking for an excuse to work with um, all of my green again. Now, like I did yesterday and the day before, I am going over this with a flat brush, and I'm giving it a little bit more of a vintage look, as you can see. So it has a little more brown to it. And we're gonna glue her, I'm just gonna get her glued down right away because I know that I want her to be my focal point for the center of this. And once I cut it up, of course, there'll be, there'll be multiple focal points, but for right now, I mean, if I, what I usually do is, um, my original collages, what I do is I scan them into my computer and save them. And then after that, I end up cutting them up and, you know, doing multiple things with them. So that's what I mean when I say I'll probably be cutting this up. Um, now I'm just over here looking real quick. I really, my eyes were really drawn to, um, I think I have her in a smaller version, but yeah, I think I'll use this one. My eyes were really drawn to this young lady right here earlier, and uh, I liked her, so I'm going to cut her out and get her ready to use. And then um, I think I'll skip any of those. Let's see. Aren't they beautiful? Oh my goodness. I mean, how do you choose, right? They're just, ugh. since she's got so many flowers, and like I said, this is going to kind of be one, I think I said it out loud. I may have just thought it. This is going to kind of be one that's got a little more of an outdoorsy feel just due to um, I'm the green and everything. So I thought that I would utilize some things that made you feel like you were outside or in a garden or something. Um, so the pictures I was going to use. There's one of Marilyn. Isn't that a nice print? It's beautiful, right? I really, really, I like her too. She's so pretty. So I'm going to take her out of the mix here. Or I should say put her in the mix. Okay. And um, that's probably going to be it for those. What else? What do you guys think? Aren't these beautiful? Some of them I've seen before, but some of them, this is the first. And I, I, I purchased these here a while back from Adamo Prints. That's on Etsy. As you can see, A-D-A-M-O, Adamo Prints. And I opened them a few minutes ago looking for something else and was like, oh my goodness, I forgot I even had these. Look how beautiful they are. And so I printed them. <laughs> I figured even if I don't use them right today, I'll, I'll fussy cut them out and get them ready to be used in the near future. So, yeah, they're just absolutely beautiful. Let's see. So I got I got up really early. I get up really early anyway. About usually well during the week I get it between 1 30 and 2 30 because like I said my my husband is a landscaper and so I get him off to work very early and I get up and I spend time reading the word and and uh, having my coffee and kind of getting myself awake and then um once I get him out the door you know my Etsy shop opens. That's what we call this area that I work over here is the Etsy shop. <laughs> he thought of that. And um, 
So yeah, I start working and, and doing my thing and getting throughout the day, getting things done around the house and stuff. And so today I woke up around four, something like that. And I did my normal and then I got out the door by 6.30 and got to uh, uh, go run my errands. So I was ready and or I was done and back in the house and ready to work and everything by shoot it was like 8 30 I was you know by 9 definitely I was done and I was ready to have my day to myself and do whatever I needed to do for me and for my business so I like those days when I get everything done early 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 and uh, he got up and did his errands and wash the vehicles and stuff like that and so he got back and we had a nice lunch and he went and took his nap and I got to come on here and hang out with you guys you know it's funny I really like hanging out with everybody on here <laughs> it's getting easier and easier to talk on the camera and to craft on the camera that's the big one for me I think I mentioned that. I, it's not the crafting as much as it is getting on here and, and talking to everybody. It's kind of, you know, never knowing if I'm going to know what to say. Or As you get to know me, you'll probably laugh about that because you think, when does she not have something to say? <laughs> I, I do know how to talk. That's true. Let's see here. Go ahead and trim this one. So what you're going to do is you're just going to pick your pictures out, you know, and like I said earlier, we're going to bring, you know, a few little extras along. And uh, I, I don't know, I don't do it with everything. Sometimes I do my collages. They'll be more like music sheets, dictionary pages, um, you know, stuff like that. And those collages I use more for... Um, tag bases. These I tend to use sometimes more often for, um, because these kind of make a tag by themselves. Once, once you've done this collage, you'll see that you don't even really want to cover them too much. But what I usually do with the ones with the music sheets and stuff like that is I'll use those as a ephemera, like a, to fold into pockets and different stuff that I can just make a pretty, you know, scene on top of. Um, and with with these kind, I do that too, but I, I, I don't cover them as much, I'll be honest, because they're pretty, they're, they're pretty artistic and um, the imagery is such that you, you don't really need to necessarily cover it up. And so I, I do like to leave them where you can really see what what is on there you know let's see here I don't know that I'll use every single one of these pictures but and I'm probably choosing pictures that are a little bit bigger than I usually do so we'll see right it's, it's a it's trying something new I, I do this same thing often and I thought well let's let's try some bigger pictures and see what we get what comes out of those I think that what I'll do with my ladies is I think I'm going to put them all the same upright direction scattered around the page and then the extras that I add in I think I will put more at a side angle and do that variation, you know, that I was showing you on the other collage page. And again, we're just going to go lightly over her, brown the white of this dress, and kind of tone down the pinks and her skin and all that. Okay, so let's see here, start laying them out a little bit. I do want to use her because I cut her out specifically. So here we go. So 
So what are you guys working on today? What's your, uh, what are your crafting projects? Fill me in. I'd love to hear about them. I'd love to see pictures of them. I can just sometimes get lost going on Facebook and Instagram and looking at what everybody's doing. Or Pinterest, my goodness, Pinterest is like a, a rabbit hole, isn't it? It's an amazingly uh, fun, beautiful rabbit hole. <laughs> uh, look what I did, I got her face a little bit marred. Look at that, can you see it? I did a little dark, I don't know, let me see. I don't know if I'll use it now. Dang it, I came in, I came in a little hard. Let's see, I do have a second one of her that is a little bigger, but let me find it here. Let me see if I can come in softer. There we go. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and I'll use that for like a journaling card or something or a tag or okay. There we go. I have to keep looking and making sure my hands are in the camera's uh, view finder because I noticed in a couple, you know, that I did that my hands were too far back and <laughs> that always irritates me when that happens in a video with somebody else because I'm like, oh, I want to see what you're doing or the reason I watch is because I want to watch your hands. I want to see what you're doing. Here we go. The green should be a lot of fun. Who else likes green out there? I know it's actually a lot of people's favorite color. I've heard people say that a lot. Okay. And I am going to do just a touch more of the, tint, the vintage photo here. I really do love the toning down of the brighter color. There we go. She looks cute. So, okay, we've got her. These two. Kind of want them. What I was thinking was that when it's all said and done, I would like it set so that the ladies' pictures aren't, like, cut out. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to worry about where I'm cutting. That That's always a concern with me for my collage pages. I know some people are brave and I've done it a couple of times where you cut it from behind you cut your collage blind um, now I don't know about all of you but that makes me a nervous wreck and and the couple of times I've done it I've turned it over and been like dang it I don't like where that's falling you know <laughs> and so I have a, a thing about doing that so yeah I'm not as brave as somebody else I've seen quite a few people do it. And theirs looks okay to me. Uh, maybe it's just because I'm too, you know, maybe I'm, I'm too critical of what my stuff looks like. I guess that's a big possibility considering it's uh, kind of normal for a person to be critical, self-critical about their art. Um, I was just thinking as I was talking that it might be kind of fun. I've done this before and it ends up being really cool. It has a really cool texture. I was thinking I may Mod Podge this after I'm done with it because um, it makes it feel kind of leathery. You know, I'm sure if you've worked with Mod Podge, you know what I'm talking about. And either the Mod Podge or I just bought, what did I do with it? Oh, it's over here. I just got this the other day, DuraClear Gloss Varnish, and it is really pretty cool too. It does some fun stuff, um, and I, I saw it on somebody else's channel, and I was like, 
oh, I love that. And I want to try it. So I, I bought me some. So I may try that. And it just gives it that sheen look, you know. Um, thickens it a little bit. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet fully. I've only just like painted it with my finger over something just to play with it a little bit when I got it. But I don't know if it actually does like the Mod Podge and gives it that um, leathery feel. Let me know if you know about the varnish, gloss varnish, what you think if you use it. I also got these the other day, just show and tell for fun. These are so pretty. Look at this blue. Oh my goodness. I couldn't believe it. It's so pretty. Look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? I got it just for a couple of bucks on Amazon. And it's the deco art as well. And this gold seemed to need to be like shook up a little bit. But I bought this too. Just because it's so pretty. I love, I love, I love metallic paints and stuff. I have a bunch of them over here that I, I stencil with and stuff in my journals. I love to stencil with metallic paints and just fun stuff. Okay, so now we have our, our beautiful ladies laid out here on our fun cardstock and now we're just going to start going through and finding some things to add and I'm going to tear them down. That's the whole torn down effect, you know. These little cards come out of uh, Tina's shop, Shabby Debbie Dee Daw. I can't remember what she calls these. Um, her French, I think they're like <sighs> nameplates, something, darn it. What I did with yesterday's video, if anybody has seen it on there, I, in my description, I didn't go in and do every separate kit because there was just so many. Um, but what I did do was I referenced you guys to each one of the Etsy shops that I pulled the kits from for yesterday and the day before's video. And I hope that helps you to, you know, at least at least be directed to where to go to get um, those particular pieces. And they're not hard to find. I mean, once you get in there, you'll see if anybody, I mean, you guys know what Etsy's like. You'll get in there and see that it's just... You can separate, separate. So like fussy cuts, you can you can pull those up separately from other stuff, um, from your background pages, you know, from your ephemera cuts. And um, I know Tina's shop, and I'm seeing it in everybody's shop that has multiple topics in their shop um, items that you can go in and you can pull up things. Um, topic and you'll get like only those things so I figured if I gave you the shop name you'd at least be able to go in and look them up that way and you have the picture of course of what I used so so what I'm gonna do with the torn now what ends up happening I usually lay it out and when I get to edges and stuff I just let it hang over um, it's not like I'm I'm not as exact as I am with the straight edge because then you can just trim it off, you know? It's it's super easy to just go in and trim off what you're working on, you know? And uh, you don't have to worry about it. It'll, it'll look finished and it'll look nice when you're all said and done. So, I'm just grabbing some random things out of my little bowls here. Um, it's starting to fill the spaces between the girls. So. As you go, you'll start to, you can, and that's the other perk about doing the torn edges, um, is that you can choose to, uh, you can take something larger, and if you need, like if I needed a strip, I could just tear this, you know, down to where it would be thin, and I could sit it right next to her. I don't have to worry about the shape, you know, that's why I was saying earlier, it's not an exact, you know, and you don't have to, it's, it's a little more freeing. To do a torn edge, I think. And I love torn edges. What about you guys? I really do. I I like them on everything personally. Um, I inadvertently discovered that I like the straight edge uh, uh, collages because I decided one day that I was doing way too many 
torn edges. And I was like, you tear everything. So I thought, okay, I'm going to try to make me a collage without tearing the edges. And that's how I discovered that I actually didn't mind it like that, at least for those. So if you see my journals and stuff, for the most part, anything I've decorated, it's all torn. It's all torn. I'm going to put this one over here. And see, I laid it sideways. Doesn't matter. It can be any direction you want. Okay. Um, let's see here. See these guys. I'm going to use the stamps and I'm going to use the flowers and stuff after I get this covered. This bowl is the one I'm going to go to for the most part. And then a couple of things here I have on the side. Uh, I have a couple of envelopes here. I make these little envelopes just to hold my stash in. And I did not create that idea, of course. I took it from multiple people who have done that online and I saw um, this one looks like fun and yes yeah, so I just use those little handmade envelopes to hold all my paper and then I got me these plastic cases from Walmart um, and I put uh, I put them in there you know and that's where I store them and I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of brown on this edge here instead. And that's a really, see that's that timber brown. It's really nice and dark. That'll stand out really cool because I'm going to go ahead and with my brush, I'm going to use the, um, I'm going to use a different brush here. Make sure that this one's it's going to be fine. Okay, so I'm going to use some green and lightly brush this over. I told you, I like to use different colors um, in my distressing. I don't like to stick with just brown. I think it's fun to... Um, to just do different stuff. Now I took a little bit of the vintage photo to soften the edges of the timber brown. Sometimes you get too much on your edges or whatever. Um, it's one of the ways that I kind of correct that. As you can see, it's kind of blending in now more. Okay. I'm gonna glue that down. Where are we at in time? Okay. 27 minutes. All right. I do not want this to be a two part. I wanted to do this in a one part. The last one I did was a two part. Mm, let's put this up here. And when you have to trim the edges of these, okay, you can come back over those spots with your just, if you end up trimming off your distressing, you can come back over those edges with that, uh, with your dauber and just put a little bit of it back on. So I'm going to go ahead and tear this. These little numbers, of course, um, I mentioned it yesterday, but you might not have seen that one. These are from Shabby Dabby Doodah, Tina Shop and Etsy. And uh, I'm just going to go around the edge here. I also, you don't always have to distress up on the paper, just getting rid of that white and deepening the edge of the paper, as you can see. See, it just kind of makes it look old. Like it's been sitting, I don't know, in a drawer somewhere for 50 years, gathering dust and darkening. Okay, let's see, where do we want this one? Let's go right here. Not sure I like that right there. It's kind of not hitting that corner as much as I'd like. But it's okay. It'll be okay. These are some of her uh, shabby dabby doodah. -da. This is some of her, um, oh gosh, I can't think. And there are these round circles. I used um, this stuff. What's it called? I'll find it. Give me a second. Oh yeah, glossy accents. 
I used some of the glossy accents to make it have like a little sheen. Kind of fun. And it, it really thickened it up too once I did that. So it's another little fun tidbit. And I'm going to go ahead and tear this ticket. I like the look of this ticket when I saw it earlier. So, or this tag by me, tag. So I decided that would bring it along and tear it apart. So what are, what are your favorite uh, type ephemera to work with? Do you love books, old books? Do you love stamps? Do you love working with music sheets or dictionary pages? Um, do you like digital kits? Do you create digital kits? Anybody out there listening who is a digital kit creator, I would love to visit your shop. I'm always, always, always purchasing <laughs> digi kits. Um, I'm kind of addicted to them. I love other people's work and I like to support stores if I can at all. If, it, if it's something I need and you have it, I am going to buy it and I will usually come back again and again and buy multiple pieces. So um, let me know if you actually are a digital kit uh, or digi creator because I'll go visit your shop and buy from you. This is coming up just a little bit so I'm going to put some glue right there. <clears throat> I would love to to do that and you know and if you if you just uh, if you just do physical items I'd still love to visit your shop please put your put your shop name in the comments below feel free to um, invite people to visit your Etsy or if you have a uh, if you have your own web page as well I welcome I welcome anyone to advertise. If you have a YouTube channel, please put it in the comments. Let me know. I'll come and subscribe and support you. Uh, I want to do that for people. I feel like, you know, I said the other day, this, this community is so supportive. And thank goodness, it, it feels, to me at least, there's so little competition. And if there is competition, I'm not, I'm not one of those people who's going to join in with it. I enjoy supporting people. I, on my Instagram, I will go in. I like to go in and um, do screenshots of, or you know, share other people's posts and stories and stuff like that on mine. And I like to promote other people. Um, I like doing that a lot because I feel like there's so many folks on there that are charging people for promotion and I get it that's their thing they're creating you know they're creating websites they're creating uh, you know logos and whatever or they're like you know come and send us a photo of one of your posts your best post or your latest post and we'll post it on our page for ten dollars a day you know stuff like that and I'm kind of like okay I can't afford that um, personally I'm not uh, I'm not poor, dirt poor, but I'm not rich. I'm going to take a sip of my tea. And I get that that's their business, and that's how they're, you know, they're making money. I just can't. I just can't personally really afford to do that. So I decided when I got on Instagram that instead I would be one of those people who would, um, support others and I would promote others free for free and it's funny because I've had people who I did it for who've contacted me and been like thank you so much for doing that and then you know I they'd once in a while they'd send me a photo and say could you possibly promote this for me and I, yeah of course you know and I've seen them actually come back and do it for my stuff see and that's what I mean it's you know you know, we, we reap what we sow, and I really, I, mean, I enjoy the fact that in our community, there's so much giving. I bought someone a coffee today. She has, uh, she has a Facebook group, and I, you know, I did the buy me a coffee thing with her. She was given, okay, she was given away a, um, a digi, and when you clicked on the link, it took you to her buy me a coffee. Well, I didn't really 
the digi was beautiful, but I didn't do it for the digital. I didn't do it for that. I did it because I wanted to uh, support her because she has this Facebook group and it's very, very, very populated. And she lets you post anything and everything on there. Um, and she supports you. I mean, she, she likes your stuff. She just a kind person and um, it blessed me. So I went ahead and I did the buy her a coffee because I just wanted to support her back. I feel like, you know, she's, she's giving so much by doing that because so many folks, I mean, and I understand they don't all let you post whatever you want. I mean, I've joined a couple of groups and I actually, I got off of them because they were, um, they were literally like, you can't even use or talk about anybody else's digital kit on my page. So those kind of times, I mean, that that surprised me and I actually um, unfollowed that group because I was like, okay, I can't even use whatever I use and show my project if it's not your papers. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, and that's rare, like I said, because for the most part, I've seen in our, our community that everybody's been really super super supportive of each other so I'm looking in my drawer here real quick for my gold now I thought I had the Brian's but I don't I have the quick sticks I got these on uh, you can get them at Hobby Lobby but I got this set at um, on Amazon for like $6.99 but I just they, they work the same as Brian's you know and you just take them around and give your give your stuff a little gold personally I think the gold just ugh, sets everything off. I also have, um, I also have this, the Curate Color Temper Tempera Paints, and I got this at Hobby Lobby. It's the it's the same thing because this is Tempera Paint, but it's in a stick, and it works the same, but it's just bigger. And I use it a lot when I'm doing a bigger project, and then. Uh, I also, I also, I, I saw uh, Louise Heinzel use this, the Opal Magic Wax, and I bought some of it. Oh man, is this stuff fun. And it smells beautiful, seriously. You just take the tiniest, tiniest little bit, okay? And then you can, you can literally go over what you're doing. Can you guys see what this is doing? Look at that. Look at that. I'm trying to see, make sure in the camera you can see it. It is so pretty, right? And it, and you can see straight through it. I mean, you can still read what this says, restore. But at the same time, you know, you've got that beautiful gold. Beautiful gold. So that's the opal. And it's by Art Alchemy. Opal Magic Wax. I've actually seen it. It, it comes in little tubs too, like a little um, little tin, and then it comes in the tube. And I got mine on uh, Etsy in a shop that I cannot even think of right now. But anyway, I got mine on Etsy. But it, oh, it smells like the most beautiful perfume. It's just beautiful. You, you gotta smell it. It's very soft, feminine, slightly floral, uh, beautiful scent. and. It dries really quick, and um, you can use it. I this tube is lasting me. I've had this tube for like I don't know four, five months, and I've hardly used any. And I use it quite a bit. So we're gonna add some gold to some of these little additions that we're putting on here. Let's see. Let's do a ticket. We haven't done a ticket yet. Um, yeah. So anyway, we were talking about the community and. I was saying that um, I had only run into that one group. Other than that, I have just seen people support, support, support. And I really, actually, I want to make sure and say it right. Um, hold on one second. I'm turning away from you guys for just a second because I want to see something real quick. Because um, I want to promote my group on Facebook and it's um, her name is Tanya and she has a YouTube channel it's 
you probably all know it, Taddy Treasure and Friends. And her name is Tanya, and she is the the group owner. She she started the group. She manages it. Wonderful, wonderful lady, and she's the one that I went on and I got her a coffee this morning. Um, yeah, she's just a wonderful gal. She never, I've never seen her. You know, everything I've put up there, she's allowed and supported, and um, always hits like and and always makes a nice comment and, and her videos are awesome she's she's great so yeah go support Tanya from Taddy Treasure and Friends yeah yesterday I was talking about Tina she also has a um, channel of course I'm sure most of you know that and then also she has she does the um, buy me a coffee if anyone didn't know that you can go and bless her um, and support her channel so yeah I just think that's cool and really important so like I was the reason I started saying all this is if you guys have a channel please post it please post it in the comments let people know about it um, via my channel and let me know about it so I can go subscribe okay because I want to support you because I know that everybody whether I don't care what level you're at you know Popularity comes and goes, but true support and friendship, you know, that's that's important and it's valuable. And if you form that with people, you know, you need to protect it and take care of it. And so I know that us supporting each other is vitally important for the, the well-being of each one of our lives because we're all doing this, you know, some of us are doing this as full-time jobs. I am trying to build my business, but I know there are people out there who are doing this as a completely full full-time job and supporting, you know, their home, their families with it. And I think it's it's awesome and I want to be I want to be there to support alongside you what you're doing. So see, this is coming together little by little, little pieces of fun. I um, want to cut, let's see. I'm going to do this one. These are, um, now this kit is Tina's, and I know because I just worked with both of them. One of them is called Spring Garden, and the other one is called Victorian, uh, Victorian Garden or Victorian Spring Garden. Uh, but they're like really similar. And um, I think this particular one is out of the spring garden. And um, they're beautiful, just beautiful. So those can be found in Shabby Dabby Doo Dah at Etsy. Like I did yesterday though, I will post, uh, I'll put in the description the shops. I'll try to make sure and remember. So far I've used uh, the stuff I've used has been from Madamo Prints, Shabby Dabby Doodah, and Tailor Made Journals. Now, if you haven't visited Tailor Made Journals, you have to go see her stuff. Honestly, it is just awesome. And she also has a channel, so please go support her as well. Here we go. I'm starting to add a little floral into the mix. I wanted to make sure that, um, did I put that on there upside down? <laughs> I might have, I think I did. Let's flip that around before it dries. Oh, 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 oh. We'll just add a little more glue back to it. <laughs> uh, I looked at the picture and I'm like, okay, wait, that's the same picture and I think they did it wrong. Okay, here, there we go. I fixed it, I fixed it before it was too late. There we go, see, nice. <laughs> You know, the great part about what we do is that even when we mess something up, it's pretty easy to fix it, right? I think it's fun. Now, these came out of um, Tina's shop, and I just love some of these. They are adorable. Little signs and ads and just the funnest little things that you can just, just stick wherever on your stuff, and it makes all the difference. These little guys just, oh, jeez. You can do anything with these. I'm going to use this one. And I think we're going to do 
this one here. What do you guys think? There's a bunch of them, huh? Look at her, she's so cute. Uh, will she go? Yeah, with the little green around her, I think she would. We're gonna we're gonna put her in the mix too. Cadbury's cocoa, we're gonna use that. I gotta be careful because I will like have literally nothing but green on this page. So we do I'm not gonna use bright blue or anything because I've been blued out. I blue's my favorite color. Okay. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. It is my favorite color. However, oh, I like this guy. However, I have been working on those blue journals and I have done, <laughs> I've seen so much blue and I went a little crazy when I was buying my digital kits and I bought tons of blue digital kits. So you're probably, if you guys watch my flip throughs, cause I'm gonna keep doing my flip throughs on here. You're probably going to see uh, me have quite a few ads with um, blue, or I mean uh, quite a few journals with blue. I'm looking at these ads and I said that um, because I just, I, I bought so many and they're so pretty, oh jeez. But I'm kind of blued out and so I'm gonna have to sprinkle the blue throughout with other stuff, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I did, I overdid, I overdid it with the blue. I really did. But that's okay. I do want this guy in there. But I'm going to do like a darker brown around the edges since he's already green. I love the darker distressing. Do you guys like that too? Um, around the edges. I enjoy it because I think that it makes everything look super distinct, you know. And I enjoy that. So this is going to end up being another two part video because this, you know, it's time consuming to actually sit here and hit every spot. You know what I mean? This one right here. No, it's too thin. Let's take it here. Yeah. There we go. Oh, and I didn't tear it. Oh, well, it's okay. It's okay. It'll be all right. <laughs> Don't be quite so uh, particular. You know, I know we see some of these pictures and some of these images so often, but I always am drawn to this hand that's writing. I don't know why, but I am. And I see it all the time on other people's stuff. It's not just on Tina's things, and I've seen it in Tim Holt's things, and I just think it looks so cool. I guess I'm not the only one, or I wouldn't see it so often, right? Let's see. I'm going to do green around this one. So what do you guys think about um, the collages? Do you like doing the collages? I asked one of my friends before I made these videos if she thought there was enough collage videos out there. And she was like, there is never enough collages. So hopefully other people who are coming along and seeing that the videos about a collage are thinking the same thing. I feel that way. I'm like that about snippets too, uh, snippet rolls. Uh, cloth fabric snippets what I want to do um, I made one of these a few times and one of them I sold in my shop and the lady really liked it um, I got a five-star review for it I did a cloth paper um, collage I'm gonna put this one right here and it was with buttons and uh, or a snippet roll I'm sorry I said the collage um, yeah, it was with buttons and cloth and lace, and then it was all on the base of book pages, um, vintage book pages. It came out so pretty, uh, and I really, really enjoyed doing that. So I might do one of those on my channel. I think that would be kind of fun. Um, I'm not sure yet. We'll see. It's kind of, uh, because I'm so new to doing this, you know, I'm still trying to figure out stuff that I'm comfortable with working with with you guys right now at least until I really get used to collage or uh, I've got collage on the brain <laughs> till I get used to doing um, you know different types 
of uh, work in front of everybody. The crafting thing in front of everyone is, a, like I've said, it's a bit of a challenge for me. It's a bit, and then also, you know, talking and not just having you guys be in total silence. I forgot to, I'm gonna tear this one. Um, not having you guys in total silence as well. So I'm talking a lot and that, of course, as you can tell probably, I get a little distracted. That's why I keep saying the word collage. Collage. <laughs> Have I mentioned that I like to do collage? <laughs> I'm just playing. Is that a mom joke? I'm sorry if I just did a mom joke. If my kids were here, they'd probably be like, Mom, really? That is not funny. <laughs> they might laugh at me now. They're a little older. You know, they're not, they're not little kids anymore. My son is going to be 33 in uh, two weeks. My daughter will be 31 uh, in the fall, in November. So they're not babies anymore. So they actually uh, find mom kind of funny now that they're older. You know how it is when you're young and you, you think mom and dad are goofy. Thank goodness they, they survived those years. And so did I. <laughs> this little girl's cute. Look at her. She's this pretty little girl. She kind of looks a little summery for this for this collage. Maybe I should have. I don't know. I know we're in summer, but that's true. It's, it is summer right now, so at least for me. I know yesterday I mentioned that my friend in Africa had told me it's winter there, and I was I I had I think now that she had said that I remember learning all that, but I don't know. I just hadn't thought about it being winter, and uh, on the other side of the globe, but it makes total sense and being summer here. I don't, I'm not one of those people though that sticks with a particular, like, cause it's summer, we have to do summer projects. I was even looking at some Christmas digis the other day and thinking, you know, I could start working on Christmas stuff if I wanted to. It's not, you know, we can have Christmas in July. That's a thing, right? Um, I'm not one of those people that gets up in the morning and goes, oh, I have to have eggs and bacon for breakfast. If I want to eat leftovers from dinner for breakfast, I will. <laughs> and so I don't necessarily stick with the expected norm, I guess, on things. I'm a little bit rebellious that way. This is looking pretty cute though, right? I think I love doing just, see, we're gonna put some of these flowers on here. What else do we have in here? We got other pretty girls I had picked. Oh, I did want this girl on here somewhere. I do, I do, but she's a little bit, I guess she, she is too. I'm gonna try it, let's see. Let's be adventurous and uh, we can probably darken her somewhat. I really wanted her picture on here and I had forgotten because I put her in this bowl and uh, I love this picture. This is coming, this is crooked, I'm gonna straighten it. Now my fingers are gonna be brown, please forgive me, and my hand. Um, I'm going to use the brown and darken the edges here. Tone down that green slightly. I just thought she was super cute. And when I pulled it out earlier, I was like, oh yeah, she's going on there. So we'll find a spot for her if possible. Now what I'll do is I'm going to take the vintage photo and lightly brush it over her again like I always do with everybody. Get rid of some of the brightness. There we go, look at that. She's toned right down, look, she fits. So where should we put her? Let's see, oh. Should I do her sideways? I could. Hmm. I don't know, she may not fit now that I've... Yeah, she can cover her face, right? Yes, guys, I saw that. I think I'll put her right here. Watch, it'll look good, I promise. I'll make it work. It has to work. Now, I have a question. So, how do you guys do your glue? Do you do like dots? 
do you swirl it around like me? Do you put a lot, a little? When I'm doing it, is it making you like, oh gosh, she's using so much glue. Um, I know I've read people's comments and they have complained that someone used too much glue and I'm just curious if I am driving you crazy. Am I wasting? <laughs> I hope not. Uh, let's do map. How's that? Let's do a map. That will kind of go. Oh, there was my dog. My neighbor just left and she heard the door and she's barking. Tippy. Shh. Tippy is a chihuahua and she is honestly the best chihuahua in the world. Best behaved. Um, no, Tippy, no more barking. Okay. Um, she is just amazing. She just turned eight years old and uh, she's an apple head, a little stocky thing. She's very tiny, but too, she's a little bit overweight like her mama. And, uh, but she's so, so, so sweet and she never tears things up. She's hardly ever barks. She uh, never, ever has bitten a single person, other animal. Um, she doesn't get in the trash. She doesn't do any of the typical crazy things that Chihuahuas are known for. Um, when we, my daughter had been, had had her with her for a season, about three years she'd been with my daughter. And I had to bring her home because my daughter couldn't keep her where she was living, where she had moved to anymore. So I told my husband who had not, we've been together for almost four years. I'm a widow and, uh, I'll tell you that story another time. But anyway, my, my current, my new husband, he had not uh, been around Tippy a lot, you know? So he was like, okay, as long as she's not, you know, gonna go potty in the house. <laughs> I said, no, 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 she won't, I promise. Okay, we left one time, we had to drive up north to get my late mother-in-law's belongings after she passed away. Uh, this was last year. And we drove all the way up to a town called Prescott Valley and we were gone packing and driving back, you know, and we left Tippy here. And we left her with potty pads and her food and her drink and all that good stuff, but she's very stubborn and she does not like to use potty pads. Now she has used them recently, but at the time she still was stubborn. And so when we got back home, it was like 15 hours later, okay, Tippy had not gone potty in the house. I was so, so proud of her. I felt bad that she didn't use her potty pads, but at the same time, I was so proud of her. She is amazing because anybody who knows Chihuahuas knows that they would go, you know, they don't care. They'll just hike it anywhere and they'll poop you anywhere. And not Tippy. Mm -mm. She's just the best little girl. So for you guys to even get to hear her voice is kind of surprising. She only barks one or two barks. Uh, she might growl a little bit under her breath if she hears a noise. But yeah, she's just super sweet. So, do you guys have pets? I have two cats. They are a brother and sister. And then I have Tippy. Um, Tippy was my last pet with my late husband. Uh, and she was, she's been with us since she was a baby. We got her um, from my, my sister-in-law, um, my, my late husband's brother's wife. Uh, she had been born with her. I picked her from a picture out of all the, all the babies that were in the litter. And it was funny because I had a dog when I was a little girl who was named Tippy and she had gotten out and she was just a puppy. She's about four or five months old. She had eaten. We had, in Arizona, you have to get your property Either you do it or you have to get it done. You have to use exterminators, okay? Because we have, we have so many things here in the desert, all right? And so at the time, we were getting our, our land. My mom, you know, was getting our yard and our house exterminated. And little Tippy, the, the one I had when I was, I was only like 11 years old, she got a hold of a bug that had eaten poison and she ate it and it killed her. She was just a baby. So I was so brokenhearted and I was, like I said, I was 11 years old. And so I waited my whole life and I always wanted to name another animal Tippy and never did. And finally, when we got her, I said, honey, can we call her Tippy? 
And he's like, yeah, sure. So when we got there to pick her up, this was really cool. My sister-in-law was holding her up, kind of, you know, goo goo gone around on her face, you know, and like right in her face, kissing her and hugging her. And she was just eight weeks old. She's a tiny, tiny little thing. And when I walked in, I told her, I said, yeah, Debbie, I'm going to, I'm going to name her Tippy. And she turns her head and looks at me and she's like, got this shocked look on her face. And I go, what, what's wrong? And she goes, well, you don't understand. I've been calling her ever since she was born. I've been calling her Tippy. And I said, are you serious? She goes, yeah. She said, this is why. And she turned around and she goes, look at her tail. And Tippy has a little white tip of fur on her tail. And so Debbie had been calling her Tippy ever since she was born. So that's that was meant to be, I thought that was really a cool, cool thing that happened. I just loved it. I was like, oh my gosh. So that was what was meant to be with little one. She she is tippy. <laughs> so yeah. What are what kind of dogs do you have? Cats? What other animals? I'd love to hear. Um, and what are their names? Do you have any funny anecdotes to share? <laughs> if you want, I will share your story on my channel, um, and we can all laugh together. My other two uh, are cats, like I said, and he is, uh, it's a brother and a sister. I'm looking at the clock. Okay, we've hit an hour, guys, so let me see, wait. Yeah, we've hit an hour. So anyway, um, I'll tell you about my cats and then I'm gonna shut up a shop and I'm gonna go ahead and do the second part and I'll just have it as a two part. Um, anyway, but he is, he looks like a mix between, um, oh my gosh, those long hair, what are they called? I can't think, all of a sudden my mind went blank. Well, she's a tuxedo, the sister. And black and white, your typical little tuxedo cat. She's very pretty. She's very sweet. Her name is Mia. We call her Princess Mia sometimes, or Mimi. And then he is the one that has like long hair. He has blue eyes. He almost looks like a Himalayan. That's the one. Uh, he's got that Himalayan look. So I don't know. The mom, you know, she had obviously a boyfriend that was Himalayan and one that was tuxedo. <laughs> but anyway. Um, and she, uh, he is beautiful and huge. He's such a big, big cat. Now, both of these cats love to kiss. So I, I know you, you probably know if you've owned cats at all that there are those cats who love to love on you and they like affection. And then there's those who do not. Well, these two love, love, love affection. Now, Mia is a little more persnickety about when she gets her affection or gives it. She likes to cuddle in the evening after I'm laying in the bed and she likes to cuddle early in the morning when I first get up. And other than that, she pretty much leaves me alone unless I'm eating something with milk in it. <laughs> she loves anything with milk. Bobo, as I call him, he will come and love on me whenever he wants. He follows me everywhere. He is a huge mama's boy and adorable so yeah that's my kitty stories um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and in this video and we are right now we're this is where we're at hopefully you can see that well it's looking pretty it's going to look even better when we're done i hope you'll like it um thank you so much for visiting my channel again thank you for hanging out with me i had a good time i hope you did too and um, I'll come back tomorrow with another video for you. All right. You have a great day. Thanks. Be blessed. Bye-bye.